if it isn't my dear partners. That voice! It's Navia! <laughs> I didn't expect to run into you guys here today. Are you headed somewhere? How about you, Navia? Are you still busy rebuilding Poisson? Uh, we've wrapped up most of the rebuilding, but there are still a few things left to take care of. Stocking up on materials, confirming construction timelines, discussing compensation terms with families affected by the disaster. Uh, uh, between all of that, I've been making a lot of trips between the court and Poisson. Well, though the victims have received relief payments from the court, in my opinion, as the administrators of Poisson, Spina di Rosula should take some responsibility as well. Our financial situation right now isn't the best, so all we've been doing is signing agreements for the damages to be repaid at a later date. Though just pieces of paper now, they demonstrate our commitment. They're necessary to restore the people's faith in us. Oh, spoken like a true president. You're a really responsible leader. That must be taking up most of your time though, right? Oh, you bet. Between that and all the other errands I have to run at the court, I'm always forgetting one thing or another. So before I came over this time, I took a page from Elusa's book and decided to make a list of everything. This way, it's easy to see which tasks you haven't checked off. And then, since Malus loved using shorthand, I decided to also follow his example and come up with some shorthand of my own. But after running a few errands in the city, I'm kind of struggling to even read my own handwriting anymore. <laughs> that does sound like you, all right. So what kind of shorthand did you use? Oh, wanna take a look? Lip Hymancy! Uh, wait! There's nothing here but a bunch of weird symbols. This looks like a... a piece of kelp wrapped around a stick. And this other one... Um... Is it supposed to be a boar in a box? Hmm... Uh, the first one has to do with confirming the final payment amount for the fishermen. While the second one... Is a reminder to try the new burger that just hit the market. Okay, Paimon can definitely see how you might forget what each of these mean. <laughs> Thank you for your advice. These are the kinds of things you only really figure out once you've tried them out yourself. I thought that as long as I understood my shorthand when I came up with it, I'd be sure to remember the symbols when I looked at them later. Unfortunately, I've definitely proven myself wrong. Well, now you know for next time. Anyway, I should have already taken care of most of the things on the list. There are still a few symbols that I can't decipher, but I don't think they're anything too super important. Worst comes to worst, I'll just make another trip. Ah, so you're going to head back now? Yep, that's the plan. Oh! Actually, since we talked about the reconstruction earlier, want to come with me and check out the town for yourself? You said you don't have any plans, right? So we can just catch a boat and head over. It won't take long at all. Uh, it's a bit sudden, but Paimon doesn't see why not. What do you think, Traveler? Then let's go. We'll take a boat over. Oh, you mean the Aquabus, right? Like the Clementine one? Oh, sorry. I meant our own boat. The Aquabus doesn't have a station near Poisson, so we'll use one of the Spina's boats. All right, follow me. I'll take you there. Mm, the engineer is still doing a few routine safety checks. We can head out as soon as we get the green light. So, Paimon has always wanted to ask. The three Aquabus lines are all named after people in your family, right? Yeah, that's right. Callus and Navia are self-explanatory, while Clementine was the name that my mother went by. If you provided the Mora to build the lines, then why isn't there even a dedicated line to Poisson? Spina di Rosula built all the lines, yet you still have to take a special boat just to go home. Paimon doesn't get it. Well, 
What I heard is that most of our businesses don't actually use Poisson as a hub. So there was no real reason to build a line straight to Poisson. You are right that it is a bit strange, though. If you've already committed to build three lines, why not just add a fourth? Yeah, that's what Paimon's saying. The Aquabus is so convenient, it's really a huge shame. Well, it is what it is. You know what my father was like. Even I often struggled to figure out what was going on in his head. <laughs> but that would only be the case if he cared about what others thought. My father was always really stubborn. Once he made up his mind, good luck getting him to change it. From what I've heard, the rights of all the other members of the Spina only went as far as giving him advice or suggestions, and no farther. That included my mother, too. Huh. Well, that explains why you weren't on the greatest of terms with him. Yeah, because I wouldn't just let him keep getting his way. He was just... <sighs> not very agreeable. Boss, the boat's ready. We can head out. All right, then let's head out. It'll be a while before we get to Poisson. Let's keep talking. Hmm. Navia, what was your mother like as a person? Oh, Paimon, sorry. She totally forgot that you mentioned before that she passed away during childbirth, so you probably don't remember her at all. Oh, uh, that's all right. I've heard many stories about her from the rest of the Spina. They've always said that they were sure we would have gotten along famously. While my papa was stiff like a board, my mother was supposedly super cheerful and funny. Their complimentary personalities allowed them to make up for each other's flaws. My father would run the businesses and expand our reach, while my mother would keep the peace and make sure that everyone was happy. Their work made sure that the Spina could grow and thrive. Sounds like they were not just a well-matched couple, but fantastic business partners as well! Yeah. But those are just stories and anecdotes, after all. It's hard for me to piece together a more complete or intimate picture of her. But sometimes, I'd still look at the Clementine line and wonder, would the Spina and Poisson still be what they are today had my mother survived? Silver once said that a name is a kind of inscription, a way to etch a memory into the world. When given a name, a cold, inanimate object can gain a completely new meaning. So, I will always associate the line with her in my heart. Over the past few weeks, I've also begun to appreciate how water can take in and hold our most intense feelings and memories, as well as how one may reflect on their past by watching the sea. I've lost many beloved people and memories to the sea. Even though I cannot stop for them and must continue to keep moving, The fact won't change that they existed in my life and gave me the reason and motivation to move forward. Always. But no matter what, we can't change the past. But I tell myself that I need to keep looking towards the future. Everyone, even my parents, have already overcome so many obstacles. Besides, I'm the president of Spina di Rosula. I've got to keep my chin up. Ah, we've reached the shore. Let's go. I'll show you the new Poisson. Navia... Do you think she's doing all right? Okay. Paimon supposes you're right. She's really been through a lot. It couldn't have been easy shouldering so much by herself.
Ross, you're back! Traveler and Paimon, welcome back to Poisson! Oh, hey! Fancy seeing you again, Florent! Is it your turn to take care of Navia now? Hey, I can totally take care of myself. For the time being, I'll go around without any attendance. We did hand over some of Malus's old responsibilities to Florent, though. It's been really nice to have him around to help out. Thank you for the compliment, boss. As you see, I've been working closely with the boss on rebuilding Poisson. Mr. Malus was an extremely capable and respected member of the Spina. I've got some really big shoes to fill. All right, all right. There's no need to be so formal. Everyone's practically old friends by now. Were you waiting here for me? Did we manage to make any progress on the statue? Yeah, we contacted a sculptor about the job. But they can't get started on sourcing a correctly sized block without knowing the design that we want to use first. You're commissioning a statue? Ah, so basically, we've been meaning to commission a statue of my parents in commemoration of everything they've done for the Spina and the town of Poisson. But since my father was known as Callus the Unfaithful for the longest time, it would have been too controversial to commission a statue of him. But now that his name has been cleared, and the town is also being rebuilt, I thought this would be the perfect chance to actually realize this dream. The funds to build the statue were freely donated by the people of Poisson, to show their appreciation for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus and everything they did. Me? I'm just the newbie president that's running around and causing everyone trouble. <laughs> Maybe we can have this conversation again in a few decades, once I've done more for the town and the people. Hey, there's no need to be so humble. Didn't you just help save the entire country? I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe that Ba should have a place on the statue. Hey, if you keep inflating my ego like this, I might just float off into the sky with my parasol. <laughs> just kidding. There's no way that I'd accept that kind of compliment at face value. At a minimum, I'd have to match what my father did for the people. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. I just don't think I'm ready yet. Anyway, Florent, now it's up to us to confirm the final design, right? Mm-hmm. We can ask the sculptor to start looking for a good block once we've decided on the poses for Miss Clementine and Mr. Callus. But we haven't had any real discussions yet on the possible designs. I feel like I should get a few promising designs first, and then send them over to you to review. Uh, there's no need for all that. Let's decide on a design right now. Hey, you! Come over here with me. Modeling a few poses, of course. <laughs> here, just pretend to be callous, and I'll be Clementine. That's... um... Didn't you say on the boat that Callus and Clementine sounded like great partners? Well, then there's no one better to fill this role than my most valuable partner. Florent, let's grab some reference shots. You've got it, boss. I'll go get the camera. Well, what do you think? Got any ideas? Well, I've actually discussed it a bit with Florent before, but I could never come up with any fresh or original ideas. It's probably because my idea of them is already kind of set in stone. So, I want to pick your brain for a bit, and see if you can come up with some new and interesting ideas. I'm all good here, boss. Feel free to start posing whenever. Imposing, huh? Oh, I've got it. Let's try this. This pose! It makes me recall Spina de Rosula's glorious golden age. But isn't Clementine's pose a bit too... bold and heroic? Was she really that kind of person? If we were to stick with this pose, maybe people would wonder if she was actually the real boss behind the scenes. Well, tabloids did indeed speculate as much back in the day, but the Spina pulled a few strings and made both the report and the journalist, uh, disappear. Oh, Paimon was just kidding! Please don't make Paimon disappear. <laughs> what Florent meant was that we asked the journalist to choose a new alias. You're right, though, that this may not accurately represent the image of her in our hearts. 
Let's try to come up with something else. Ah, by that, do you mean as if we were standing on a boat and looking out at the sea? Sure, let's give that a try. Whoa, you really remind Paimon of a captain and their first mate. Look over there, my dear Clementine. As you can see, every tree on that island is dripping with mora fruit. Mm, but there's something off with the composition. This pose makes Mr. Callus look too tall next to the lady. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, then let's swap. Well, Paimon is a fan. A statue like this would look fantastic on a boat. Wait, but we can't do that. Very few people would see the statue if we were to put it on a boat. This statue is meant to be placed in the town. But then, since we're putting it in the town, the whole point of the pose would be lost. Oh, okay. We'll try to think of something else. A happy pose? You mean something like we were laughing together at a funny joke? Uh, would all that be able to come through with just a picture? Would we even be able to tell what they are supposed to be laughing about? Yeah, and that'd probably be a massive pain to sculpt as well. Hmm. Can one of you try striking a pose like you're talking while the other one laughs? Ugh, that actually sounds pretty hard to pull off. Forget it, let's try something else. Ugh, we tried a bunch of different ideas, but none of them felt right. Paimon's all out of brain juice now, too. Oh, don't worry. We still got a lot of reference shots out of the session, and each of them can be considered to be a souvenir in their own right. Let's just keep the ideas we tried as backups. Man, if I knew I was going to do a photo shoot with the Traveler, I would have prepared a lot of outfits and props ahead of time. <laughs> oh, outfits! Oh, that's the errand I forgot back in the city. Do either of you still remember that girl? The girl I went to see with you two. Her name is Adele. Oh, Paimon remembers her. She was the one that we met while investigating Mr. Callus's case, right? Yes, that's exactly who I'm talking about. So, after the case, she was finally willing to talk to me. And she told me that she wanted to join the Spina, too. I said that it's fine, but young children are not allowed to join the Spina. She will just have to wait a few years, and then we'll welcome her with open arms. Since she's still a child, though, she thought I was just trying to let her down gently. But how could I get her to believe that I meant what I said? In the end, I came up with an idea. I'd have a Spina uniform made and give it to her as a gift. But I got so busy and distracted in the city that I forgot to pick the uniform up. Uh, so I did forget something important after all. Don't worry, boss. I can send someone to pick it up right away. On the matter of the statue, we should still come up with a few more ideas for the design. I'll have to trouble you to source some for me. We could have just done that from the start. Mm, yeah, you're right. They'll have some value as souvenirs at least. <laughs> Navia! Florent, guess who's back? Huh? But aren't you supposed to... Oh, well, if it isn't Coulter. Back already from the Fortress of Meripede? <laughs> That's right. I finally finished serving my time. Gotta say, it turns out I was a lot tougher than I thought. After I got out, I immediately made a beeline back to Poisson. You'd say that familiar, briny smell became a primal call, urging me to forget everything else and just come back home. You wouldn't believe how much I've missed Melissa's grilled fish. I dreamed about it every time I had to get a welfare meal down there underneath the sea. 
It's good to have you back, Coulter. You look as well as ever. And this guy is? Ah, oh, let me introduce you. This is Coulter, another of Spina di Rosula's members. He was found guilty and sentenced to the Fortress of Meripede some time ago. But, looking at it now, it was probably another one of Marcel's plots while he worked at the Confrerie of Cabriere. Wait, wait, Mr. Marcel? What do you mean? He was involved in some sort of plot? Have you not heard anything at all about the water from the Primordial Sea case? Well, I know that Fontaine got flooded, but then the water levels miraculously receded. I thought that was all there was to it and didn't care to ask for any more details. Do you mean Mr. Marcel was somehow involved with all that? Oh, looks like we'll have to explain everything from the top. That case... Uh... A lot of things have happened in Poisson since then. First things first, let me introduce you to these two. They're my most trusted partners, and they've been with me through thick and thin. Now you could call them Spina di Rosula's VIP helpers. Oh, nice to meet you. I don't recall Navia ever generously complimenting anyone like that before, so you must be pretty amazing to get that from her. <laughs> Before we even met her. Humble again as always, I see. Even when I was totally sincere with my praise. Nice, nice. Spina di Rosula always seems to attract great people. Oh, that reminds me. Where are Malus and Silver? Aren't they always by your side? Um, about that. Coulter, a lot of things happened while you were gone. As you can see, even Poisson isn't quite the same as how it was before you left. They lost their lives, keeping me safe during the Flood. What did you say? This isn't some kind of morbid welcome home prank, right? You're just scaring me on purpose because I don't know anything about what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. <laughs> they weren't the only people we lost, either. Many others, including Melissa, also lost their lives in the disaster. Luz and Melissa... dead. They're just... gone? Luz... I was planning to give him a surprise gift once I ran into him again in town. I can't believe it. Uh, hey! Keep it together! Melus and Coulter were friends for many years and even served on many missions together during the early days of the Spina. I can understand how he feels. Oh, let's sit down somewhere, so I can tell you everything that has happened while you were gone. Fair warning, there was... a lot. I... okay. Unbelievable. I, I can't believe that those stories were real. It all really happened. Has the world gone mad? I think you and I both feel the same way about the profound tragedy of Melusa's loss. And the sheer depravity of Marcel's actions. I thought Mr. Marcel would always stand by the Spina. Everything he had, the Spina gave to him. It's unconscionable to have received all that, and yet still plot to kidnap and dissolve you for his insane research. The good news is that the Confrerie of Cabriere is no more. Gone with them too is the entire synth manufacturing and distribution network. <sighs> we finally closed the curtain on that long struggle. Are you sure? But if Marcel wanted to rebel against us, he probably sent word in secret to Romeu. Romeu? Huh. Not 
a name I've heard before either. Florent should remember him. You see, there was once a major internal dispute regarding funding the construction of the Aquabus lines. Romeu was the leader of the faction that thought such a vast sum of mora would be better spent improving the town of Poisson. But Mr. Callus believed that an opportunity to collaborate with the Court of Fontaine and the Fontaine Research Institute was hard to come by, and would allow us to build many valuable relationships. Not only would the Aquabus be a good business investment, it would also boost our reputation among the general populace, eventually paying us massive dividends down the line. But the two couldn't come to an agreement. Romeu ended up taking a lot of people with him when he left Spino di Rosula altogether, and the split was on extremely bad terms. Ugh. And with Papa's stubbornness, I can definitely imagine how it must have gone down. And of course, when he was suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous injustice, those relationships that he spent a fortune to build didn't help in the least. Yeah. You could say it was the price he paid for sticking to his beliefs. Oh, that's a good point. If Callus was really as stubborn as you say, then wouldn't he have argued with the rank and file all the time? Oh, yeah. It eventually became a thing that just happened on every day that ended with Y. But Navia, uh, I mean, boss, you might not know this, but he wasn't always like that. He used to be a lot better with taking counsel. With him listening to our advice, and Miss Clementine also frequently on our side, it was pretty smooth sailing for a good many years. But on the matter of the Aquabus, even Miss Clementine completely stood by Mr. Callus's side. Huh. I never knew. But from my perspective, Romeo's position had a lot going for it. Couldn't they have sat down and talked it out? I think the Aquabus was just the straw that broke the camel's back. On that topic, they eventually came to a rather radical conclusion. They believed that Miss Clementine lost her ability to serve as an impartial mediator when she became pregnant with Callus's child. So they thought she had betrayed them? But that doesn't make any sense. Before she was their mediator, my mother was also her own person and a member of the Spina. She should have the right to take any side she wished. Yeah, but to them, even taking a side was betrayal enough. They felt like their voices could no longer be heard once their sole mediator had gone over to the other side. Of course, Ms. Clementine then passed away, and Mr. Callus began to regard the completion of the Aquabus project as her final wish. With that, the last hope of reconciliation was gone. So that's what happened. From that point on, Romeu and his people cut ties with the Spina. and never gave us any kind of professional or personal courtesy ever again. Perhaps they've regarded us as enemies ever since they left. But even so, there is still no proof that they ever acted in concert with Marcel. I've also heard that they aren't in a good financial position, so they've been lying low for a while. But as long as they exist, they'll continue to be a threat. Huh. I think Coulter's got a point. Both Marcel and Romeu had my father in their sights for a very long time. Even though Marcel's faction has been dissolved, we still don't know anything about Romeu's whereabouts. If they're still trying to get revenge on us, with how distracted and vulnerable we are, now would be the best time. Good thinking, boss. We should keep an eye on them at all times. I'll let my men know right away. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Florent. And Coulter, thank you for telling me about this as well. Uh, don't worry, it's nothing. Do you have a moment right now? How about we go out for a walk? I've heard so many incredulous things today. I'm finding it a bit hard to calm down even now. I mean to think that I'll just never see them again. Ah. In that case, why don't we go back to the court? I can pick up Adele's uniform while we're there as well. It'll save Laurent's guys a trip. Want to come with me again, you two? You don't mind, do you, Coulter? Oh, uh, uh, of course. That's fine by me. Then let's go! Paimon feels like a lot hinging on this visit. 
<laughs> we really are the best of partners. Come on, let's go. Walk from time to time, isn't it? Think of it as something like a hiking trip. Once we're there, we can stay a few days before we return. Sounds good. I haven't walked this road in a long time. far enough for now. Let's take a break. Since we're out for a walk, we shouldn't stress too much about the destination. <laughs> I've grown old, so I'm not as fit as before. It's a good thing that at least my work down in the fortress was quite the workout. Well, Pyma thinks you're doing great. We didn't have to slow down for you at all. Back in the days before the Aquabus lines were built, we often had to hike north with our goods, then catch a boat to the court. Malus and I must have traveled this way hundreds of times. When we were tired, we would lay down for a while on the grass, and when we were hungry, we'd catch a fish or two. The spina was still on the rise back then. Mr. Callus was generous, and everyone had the chance to strike it rich. So, of course, we all worked really hard. And now, in the blink of an eye, the aquabus lines have been built, and this road has fallen into disuse. Oh, I know. I was just being a little nostalgic. Then let's stay here a bit longer. Anyone want snacks? Oh, is this another chance to try some of Navia's macarons? Paimon's been dreaming of them. <laughs> yep, I figured you wouldn't say no to a few more. Oh, uh, wait. Let me check if I have all the ingredients. Uh, Malus and Silver used to take care of tasks like this. Okay, the stove's looking good. And as for the ingredients... Seems like we're all out of flour and sugar. The two most important ingredients of all. Oh, would you? Oh, but it would be too much to ask you to go on a trip just for those. We should contribute to making the macaron, too! Don't worry, we cook out in the wild all the time, so she should have some stuff on hand. Oh, that's great. Then I'll leave the ingredient gathering to you. As long as we have some sweet flowers and wheat, I can start the baking. Then I'll go look for some boxes nearby for a makeshift table and chairs. Great. Then I'll prep the stove. Let's get to work, everyone! Ah, how did it go? Did you find the ingredients? You've all done your part. Just leave the rest to me. Whoa, these macarons look and taste magnificent! Your cooking is as good as ever, Navia. Boss's baking skills have always been famous. Everyone in the Spina knows how exceptionally talented she is. Oh, <laughs> it's just a hobby. There's no need to praise me for it like that. Have you two seriously never considered joining us? You're so close to the boss, and she obviously trusts you with all her heart, so... Oh, I see. Is that why you have to always stay on the road? <laughs> you just happened to walk in on our little reunion. It's actually been quite a while since we last spent time together. Adventurers never stay in one place for long. 
The name of Spina di Rosula would just tie them down. Besides, after everything we've been through together, I'm sure our hearts would remain intertwined even if we found ourselves on opposite sides of the world. Even if Paimon was far beyond the horizon, she'd still remember the delicious taste of Navia's macaron. I understand now. Then I am very lucky indeed to have been graced with the chance to meet the two of you. I will endeavor to make the most of this short yet fortuitous encounter, and enjoy every moment we spend together. We've got no wine with us, but let's still toast with water, in celebration of this moment. Quick, join in on the toast! May your travels go smoothly, may the Spina continue to grow, and may our friendship last until the end of time! All set? Let's move out then. I asked some old acquaintances in town to make Adele's uniform, so we should be able to pick it up right away. business lately. Ah, the demoiselle of Spina de Rosula. I must say, your generous patronage is the one thing keeping me from going bankrupt. <laughs> Nonsense. We all know what a talented businesswoman you are. No, oh, and don't forget, she's the boss now. My mistake, my mistake. I just got so used to calling her demoiselle. Are you here for the uniform? Yep. I forgot to drop by earlier when I was running errands around here. <laughs> I didn't expect Demoiselle to come and pick it up in person. It's just a uniform after all. Any of your folks could have come instead. Navia's always liked to take even small things seriously. Hey, that's not the only reason I'm here. We mostly just needed a walk to clear our heads. There are few things more uplifting than taking the first step on a new journey. <laughs> uh, boss has got a point. Going on a trip with friends is always better than staying cooped up at home. Very well. Please, wait here while I retrieve the uniform for you. Adele wants to join the Spina? <laughs> she hasn't given me any concrete reasons. All she says is that she really looks up to me. After we cleared her father's name, she became a lot more cheerful and outgoing. It's probably because she now knows for sure that her father was never a bad person. She said she used to be terrified of Papa, so as a result, she found all the rest of the Spina super scary as well. But the Spina is very different now. She mustered up the courage to talk to me, and felt like I could really understand her. Yeah, you could say that. By uncovering the truth about the case, I was able to give her closure at the same time. She said that she wanted to become someone like me. Someone who could lend a hand to others, instead of standing still and waiting for others to help her. From the sound of it, she'll be a wonderful addition to the Spina. I think so too. But for now, let's focus on giving her a great atmosphere to grow and thrive. She can commit to us once she's older, and can really make that decision for herself. Is something up, Traveler? Huh? Tailing? Oh, Paimon's coming! Mm. I'll go check it out, too. Coulter, please hold on to this for me. Uh, all right. Paimon 
saw them too! They had it up! Stop right there! We knew you were going to be difficult! Seems like if we want them to talk, we're gonna need to teach them a lesson first. Brothers, there's no need to skulk in the dark anymore. Let's take them out! Solidify! There is no escape! Strike a pose! <laughs> ha! Coming at ya! Now, talk. Who are you? And why were you tailing us? <sighs> Don't think we'll let you off easy if you keep silent. <sighs> How did it go, boss? Are any of you hurt? <laughs> if you thought they stood any chance against us, you were sorely mistaken. Anyway, stop playing tough and start talking. There won't be any room for negotiation once the Maison Guardianage gets involved. We... were looking to get vengeance on Spina de Rasula. We were discovered, and can't beat you in a fight. We admit it. We lost. Get revenge? Wait, you're not Romeu's followers, are you? You actually know that name? But if you do... Then surely you should understand why we hate you so much! Indeed. You haven't got the faintest hope of winning right now. <sighs> we were out drinking when we saw Navia. We got so angry we decided to follow you guys, and look for an opportunity to really mess up your day. Too bad you guys messed up ours first. Huh? You're pretty sharp, but so what? We didn't do anything, and now it should be pretty obvious that we can't do anything to you anyway. Seeing you like that just really ticked us off, and we let the drink go to our heads. <sighs> Listen, Callus is long dead. No matter what happened in the past, I want to be able to start things anew. I am the current president of Spina di Rosula, if your boss wants to talk with me, I'd be happy to meet with him. I won't press charges for your attack. That should also help demonstrate my sincerity. I understand. Thank you. I'll let our boss know. But if you so much as think about pulling something like this again, I won't be so lenient next time. Understood? All right. We get it. Come on, let's go. Are you sure it's okay to just let them go like that, Navia? I don't want to inherit my father's grudges, too. And moreover, when it comes to the Aquabus, I don't think what my father did was entirely correct, either. If the other side is willing to talk, I'm happy to open the door for a reconciliation. Opportunities for new beginnings are all around us. I support Boss's decision as well. The concept of an eye for an eye is a primitive practice that has no place in today's Spina di Rosula. Yes. Plus, we already know that they're strapped for cash. If their financial situation is that dire, they don't have what it takes to challenge us. So this may be the best time to talk. I still think we should keep an eye out for Romeo's folks, though. If he decides to ignore the warning I gave his men, then we could still have a fight on our hands. Yeah, those guys definitely didn't look like big fans of yours. I'd rather things not go that far, since... Though we haven't talked to each other for years, once upon a time we were all a part of the Spina di Rosula family. Yep, that's how I feel as well. Anyway, now that we've sent them packing, we don't have to worry about those guys anymore. It's getting late already. So why don't we stay the night in the Fluff Sandra? We can head back to Poisson tomorrow. I'll also ask someone to write Florent a letter, and inform him of everything that happened here today, so he can increase security around Poisson, and be on guard against any suspicious individuals. Do we have to stay in the Fleuve Sondre again? 
Even the pillows there smell like seaweed. <laughs> Sorry, that's just what happens when you live near water and don't get much sunlight. Poisson's pretty much the same though, so I've long since gotten used to it. We can still go out in the evening for some grilled fish and drink so. Bet you there'll be people singing sea shanties too. How does that sound? Huh, that does sound pretty cool. Okay, Paimon's on board now! Let's go! Paimon wants to sing too! Super luxurious building like the Palais Marmonia. <laughs> totally. Right on the money, Paimon. Although, of course, with the continued growth of the Spina, Papa wanted Poisson to eventually grow into a metropolis, not unlike the court. He was a very ambitious man, who rarely looked behind or beneath him. For better or worse, that always made him stand out from the crowd. And that's also why people hated him just as much as they loved him. All right. Uh, why don't you go wait for me at the restaurant? I'll go do some prep and I'll get someone to tidy up your room while I'm at it. You can use the same room as last time. You still remember the room number, yeah? Yep, yep. Kinda hard to forget when there are only so many rooms here after all. <laughs> oh, did I just hear someone taking a dig at Fleuve Sandra? I'll tell my guys to stuff your pillows full of actual seaweed right now. Oh, Paimon, sorry! Please have mercy, Navia! If you do that, then Paimon really won't be able to sleep at all! <laughs> I was just kidding. Be on your way now. Sleep yet? Oh no, not at all. I just figured that since we don't get to enjoy nights like these very often, we should try to enjoy it to the fullest. Wanna go fishing? I've got some rods and lures ready. Oh, so that's the prep you were talking about. Oh, we'll come. <laughs> well, hopefully, I didn't wake you or anything. <laughs> I knew it. You really are my best partner. Okay, let's go. To the fishing spot. <laughs> 